Red Eyes Creations Radio. This is Henrik Palmgren coming to you from a stormy Västra Götaland in Sweden. New or regular listeners, welcome. Nice to have you with us. As you know, the website is redicecreations.com. That's our home on the web for our radio archives, our member section and our frequently updated news section and a whole lot more. And uh, we are here twice a week on Thursdays and Sundays. And you can, of course, enjoy all of our extended interviews with many of our guests if you are a subscriber to our website. Uh, We are also very soon going to do our first uh, live program. And that's going to be a lot of fun trying that out. So do stay stay tuned. Soon we'll have much more information about this up on RedEyesCreations.com. Okay, uh, today we are going to talk biblical prophecy, the Garden of Eden 666, the Antichrist and a whole lot more. With us on the line we have Dr. Dr. Joyce Jeffries Pugh. She is the author to Eden, the Knowledge of Good and Evil 666 and also Antichrist, the cloned image of Jesus Christ. Uh, Joy has been involved uh, in researching biblical prophecy for about 30 years. Uh, Joyce consults with people from around the world on various issues and current events involving science and religion. Uh, She also serves as a consultant in education with MUFON regarding the spiritual and religious aspects of paranormal and UFO experiences. And uh, today we're going to focus and talk about her books, her research and uh, findings here. Uh, Her website, by the way, is drjoy.com. That's dr J-O-Y-E dot com. And uh, there you can find contact information, a short bio and uh, links to the books that we'll be discussing here today. So uh, let's say hi to our guest. Uh, Welcome, Dr. Joy. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you. I'm so excited about being your guest today. Excellent. It's it's nice to have you here. Um, How are things down in Georgia? Well, we're really happy because we are starting to get some rain that we desperately needed. We have been so very dry that we've never seen this type of um, climate really with no, um, you know, with no rain for days and days on end. So it's kind of exciting when we see a drop of rain in our area because we really are getting to a point that if we had not started seeing some rain that there would have been major rationing Hmm. of water in our area. Really? Have you had that any time before, previously? Never. And, you know, in all the years, and I've been on this earth about 51 years now, but uh, all the years that I've been in this area, and this has always been my home, you know, in Georgia, uh, we have never seen ponds go completely dry. I mean, lose every ounce, all the fish die, everything. It's been really very severe for about the last two years. Hmm. Well, let, let me tell you, I think we've been stolen, stealing some of your rain up here because we have uh, had nothing but, uh, you know, probably going back two months or something like that. You would imagine that perhaps that Sweden would be, you know, very snowy and a lot of ice and so forth by now, but we've just had rain all the time, you know. Well, it's almost like there's been a major shift in our climate, and, and you know, that has a lot to do with, I guess, some of the things that we'll be talking about today, Henrik, is that there are some very unusual climatic changes that are occurring. And uh, it's something I think that most people hear in the news that it's, you know, it's really like global warming and that it's being blamed some on, you know, the human population. Yeah. But I, I really, in my studies and in my research, I'm really going to prove, you know, that what we're seeing is really a part of end-time uh, prophecy and that if it were... Um, anything like humans causing the problem. I think that you see, if you do the research about Mars and even with the polar caps there that have melted and the climate change that's happening there, where there are no supposed human populations, then you have to wonder if there is not something major happening universally in our particular uh, you know, galaxy. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the kind of undercurrent, the the counter idea towards the, the the more popular one about global warming and that it's you know humans who's causing that is of course that this is because of uh, changes in the sun and so forth that the things are going on uh, you know on a on a on a, in our solar system basically uh, what's what's your take on that do, do you see a whole another reason for this or what's your take on that well it's like a, you know i of course my 
my research is really based uh, on biblical scripture. I do bring in a lot of the other kinds of literature that that do present itself into that same, I guess, mind frame. Um, but you know, the Book of Revelation especially tells us that there's going to be major signs in the moon, sun, stars, that kind of thing. And we we are just really, I think, uh, seeing some of this starting to happen with uh, the changes in the sun. And, and you know, anyone that can go to a website and watch the sun 24-7 like we have available now on the website, you can see the amount of sun flares that are occurring and the intensity of those sun flares, which started only just a couple of years ago with some really magnificent uh, flares that had never been recorded yeah. such in history. So if, um, if we see that and then we see things like uh, the near asteroid that just came within, uh, what was it, 1.4 lunar lengths? Something like that. The other night, and, mm-hmm. you know, and that we are actually entering into a center part of um, the Milky Way galaxy, which, of course, the Mayan prophecies of 2012 that I talk about in my research, um, you, you can't just kind of laugh it off and say, well, oh, this is a coincidence, because there's too much of it happening mm-hmm. at a uh, set kind of time. And then if you do the research and you realize that these were things that were already talked about and already written, written about, then you can't laugh it off and say it's a coincidence. It's just too much of it. It's mm. too many things at the same time to be a coincidence. And, um, of course, the Mayan prophecies. And then there are other prophecies, you know, that are out there with the uh, uh, rattlesnake uh, constellation prophecies, Indian kind of prophecies, that yeah. kind of thing that also connect all this together. So... Um, my research tries to show you that the, actually the times that we live in right now are really already etched out in some kind of history and where it has always been said, well, maybe, you know, it was just somebody's thought. Well, all these people in all these different places at all these different time periods could not have formulated, you know, on an Internet together and came up with the same idea. So it tells hmm. me that there was an ongoing plan that someone brought through history that tells us that there is a time frame for mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And a time frame, I mean time frame, if we look at the earth as a time frame, which we have our own time based by the you know, revelations of the earth against the sun, it's maybe a different time frame than none time you know, out in space or whatever. But sure. for the earth, there was a time frame. And I believe that that time frame really got its start in the Garden of Eden, and that is why my research started out in the Garden of Eden, and tries to help the reader understand how important Eden was. And I even say in in my work that um, in the beginning, the end was in the apple. The moment that we became knowledgeable by eating of the tree of good and evil, we, right there, there was an end that was set. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I believe that there has been a parallel history that has run from the Garden of Eden all the way to present day and which will finally, you know, finalize itself and what I believe will be around starting in 2012 and then move itself to about 2018, 2019. Hmm. And uh, basing that on uh, the seven years of tribulation following the, the 2012 uh, time period. Right. But um, it, it's one of those things that, as I have done the research for so many years, and I tell people that, you know, when I first started doing this, I I actually had a strange dream when I was six years old. Mm -hmm. And, yes, I was born and raised, and I went to church, you know, the week after I was born. So, yes, I was accustomed to, you know, being in a religious atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And um, at six years of age, I think it's very strange because I grew up in a time when television we had like one channel <laughs> back in those days, black sure. and white channel TV. Yeah. And, um, you know, this kind of shows that we had were like lassie and, and fun little things. You didn't see anything that would be like, I would say, like gruesome like we have today hmm. in movie theaters. But sure. my dream particularly uh, woke me up afterwards, and it was just so frightening. It was so absolutely devastating of, of what I saw. And so once I had that and I felt that I had been in the presence of of what I felt was Jesus at the end of that particular dream, 
I wanted to know more about what the end of time was like. And, and I would ask questions, and nobody really could answer those questions for me. And it was very upsetting mm-hmm, as, a, as a young person trying to find answers um, because I lived in a small South Georgia town, and the little library, let me just say, <laughs> was a little library. <laughs> and, and, you know, your textbooks could be like several 10 years old, you know, things like that. They sure. <laughs> were major up to date. But then, of course, we didn't have the technology that we have today. Yeah. And as time went on, I was able to start accumulating information. And by the time I reached 13 years of age and really read through the book of Revelations, there was just something about that I'm like, I have seen this happen. In my mind, I was just so engrossed in that. And so from that point on, all through college, my my idea, my underlining thing was trying to find out what is it that will bring masses of people together to worship an individual that's promised to come at the end of time that supposedly we will be uh, the savior of mankind, so to say. Mm-hmm. And so, like I say, my, my research kind of starts there in Eden and explains how this, that parallel history has gone through. And, and I take you just like I began placing these pieces together. And now, interesting enough, where I may be able to find two or three pieces to this particular puzzle, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, mm-hmm. now I find pieces to the puzzle daily. I mean, and there is so much that fits into the puzzle that it takes me almost 24-7. <laughs> I spend very late nights, you know, trying to get it all together, but oh, yeah. it's absolutely amazing. And it really follows what the Bible told us that would happen, that in the end times, that it would become like, a, you know, knowledge would increase and it would become like a woman in labor and that those pains get closer and closer and closer together. Mm-hmm. And in my research, I see that on a daily basis um, in so much that it's absolutely mind-boggling how it's all coming together. And, it, and it's just it's, it's a magnificent plan with uh, two very uh, unique characters, one for good and one for bad. Mm-hmm. And so my, my research shows you the, the history of the one that I believe was Lucifer, that, of course, was created in the beginning as the number one angel and his battle against the creator. And I explained to you how what we go through as humans, we do not realize how precious we are and how important our souls are in this battle. And so hopefully, you know, by taking a reader through what I have put together, it will help them not have to go to a thousand other books. They can pick up one book and I try to hit on a lot of, lot of different topics. Right. And, and actually topics that most, what I would say, traditional Christian books do not touch on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and the reason I did that is because I, I feel that my, my role in this is, an, is a restorer to the understanding of what happened. I'm not really writing this book for one particular group of people. It's actually for anybody out there who is seeking to understand the relationship between science and technology and religion. Mm, And that that is what I'm trying to restore is the understanding of that. And, of course, most people say, well, how in the world, you know, science and religion have always been at such odds with each other. But I think that my research is an attempt to show you how science and religion began and how science and religion is going to end it all. Hmm. Very interesting. So it's, um, it's, it's very, it's very detailed. It's mm-hmm. 482 pages, and it took me seven years of working on this research, almost night and day. There we go. To get all these things together, because, like I say, I, I had to touch on a lot of different things that that traditionally Christianity does not touch on, and most Christians, very few, decide to ever read the esoteric or the the Gnostic kind of uh, gospels to understand what is going on on the other side of the fence. So uh, what, what other sources, obviously you're, you're you know, very well, uh, well versed in the Bible and so forth, but what, what other sources are, have you been looking at for the book? Well, you know, I, I 